Now, um, there is this perennial question. Whenever you have something that is initially, let's say, is closer to a luxury good and not available to everybody, there are always these questions like, it's only a few that will benefit. And then over time, it diffuses and becomes more cost effective and more and more people can benefit from that. How did that happen with the with the jet age, and how do you see that happening with supersonic flight? It happens with virtually every new technology, right? Like you know, cell phones started uh, as car phones at exorbitant prices for a tiny number of people. Uh, cars, similar story. Electric cars, similar story. Computers. I mean, you know, if, if you had to be the government or a bank to have a computer, yeah. and now you know, and I think we've probably lost count of how many computers we have now per person. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the uh, so I, you know, I'm a believer in uh, trickle down innovation, and yeah. the, and the way the way it works in most cases is innovation goes to a small market of people who are most able and motivated to pay for it, and then as we scale, the cost comes down. And it becomes available to everybody. And so, uh, you know, so I, I think uh, the way supersonic should have started um, was actually with a supersonic private jet. It, we should not have built a hundred seat uneconomic supersonic airliner in the '60s. We should have built a five or ten seat supersonic private jet in the mm. '70s. That would have kicked off an innovation cycle, and we'd all be going Mach five by now. Yeah. And and the fact that we blocked trickle down innovation. Is, is why we've had a 50-year hiatus in progress.